Okay, we've got 39 people so far. Just to let you know, we're recording this meeting, so um, the recording will be available on our website as normal for anybody who isn't able to join the session today. Okay. Seems to be it so far in terms of people joining us. Okay, good afternoon to you all. Welcome to our first early years and public health briefing of 2022. I hope you all managed to get a, a bit of a break over Christmas and the new year and um, congratulations to those of you who've managed to, to dodge catching COVID yourselves. I know it's really difficult for you at the moment and you're juggling um, staff and children. Um, we're just waiting for Nadia to come off a call today to come and help us with our public health element of our briefing. But I'm joined as usual by Dawn, Jess, Sonia, uh, Jane is here in the background. Um, we'll carry on answering questions in the chat in the same way that we usually do. And um, Nadia will provide you with those public health updates when we get them. Um, we are aware that the DfE has made an announcement today about some um, temporary uh, relaxation of, of what they consider to be acceptable in terms of how you organise the children. That will be covered in the briefing tomorrow um, when we send that out. So look out for that as usual. And I think there's some updated and revised materials coming out to you um, as we revise them every time the guidance changes. And that feels like every day at the moment, certainly. OK, we don't have Nadia yet, so I think we might have to um, do questions that people have got at the beginning of the session rather than the end. Submit that person. So is Nadia anywhere on the call? OK, so Sonia, what are you saying to me in the chat, Sonia? I'm saying that we've just sent out literally just five minutes ago an email's winging its way to everybody um, with the message from the DfE about um, the, the understanding of the impact that COVID's having on staffing um, and that they will follow that with some revised guidance very shortly. And we've also updated the letter templates and the EY COVID chart in response to the changes um, that came into effect today um, around LFT testing. Yes. OK, that's lovely. Thank you, Sonia. So look out for those because they're there to help you. Um, EY inbox um, is really busy, as you might expect. So um, yesterday, as fast as we were answering the emails, they kept coming in. Um, if when you respond to us, you just automatically say to us that you've uh, notified Ofsted and PHE, that will save you getting another email from us saying, have you notified Ofsted and PHE? So if you want to cut your emails down, remember to do that. Here I am, saved by Nadia, just before <laughs> I was about to lead us in a round of early years singing. <laughs> uh, welcome, Nadia. Are you going to do, do some I... singing? I want to start the singing. I'll join no. in. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, no singing. No singing allowed. It might oh. spread Omicron. Brilliant. Well, um, hello, hand everyone. over to you. Yeah, no, brilliant. Thanks, Amanda. Um, hello, colleagues. It's um, I can't remember the last time we met. Was it before Christmas now? It was. It was. Sorry, times. Um, I'm obviously having too much fun. You are. <laughs> but um. <laughs> Just in terms of a bit of an update first around the figures. So um, Warwickshire still um, case rates are, are very high. Um, we're, we're still sort of high up the West Midlands list, if you like. And um, when you look at the district and boroughs, actually, Nuneaton and Bedworth have got the highest rate in, in the West Midlands um, as at lower tier local authority level. And we've got a bit of a north south split, unfortunately, again. So we've got North Warwickshire, Nuneaton and Bedworth and Rugby with relatively high rates. And then lower down now, we've got Stratford and Warwick, Warwick district with rates. Rates have been going up um, very steeply. Um, you, you might have have seen if you do look at our public facing dashboard that they've started to bend very slightly. We don't know when, when I say bend, look as though they're plateauing or coming down. 
we don't know how much of that is a real decrease, how much might relate to PCR testing um, access issues. Um, and also what we're not sure about is what the impact will now be of schools opening up, universities coming back. So um, I'm, I'd like to, what do they say, hope for the but hope for the best, but plan for the worst, isn't it? So um, I'm assuming that we're going to see some, some rapid increases in our children and younger younger adults in university age, um, which may well start start taking us up again. And we've never had rates this high before, so there is a lot of COVID in the, in the community. Um, <clears throat> in terms of changes that obviously impact everyone and then specifically for early years, I don't know, Amanda, if you've talked about the LFT and PCR. No. OK, so the first thing is there's been a rule change. Um, so if you remember PCRs you should take if you've got symptoms any of the COVID symptoms no matter how mild that still remains the case. LFTs you should take if you don't have symptoms they're the regular screening tests and that still remains the case but what has changed is that if you have an LFT positive you don't need to confirm that by PCR now so the rates are so high um, at the moment that you're very unlikely to have an LFT positive that's a false positive so that's why they've done it to try and preserve PCR capacity and save the PCRs for people that have got symptoms. So <clears throat> that's one change. Um, hopefully it should help you um, in that you're not sort of waiting around and actually you act on that LFT positive. So essentially whether you're PCR positive or you're LFT positive, you're a positive case and you do everything that you need to do around being a positive case. If you're a case, so I'm, I've either got a positive LFT or a positive PCR, <clears throat> I would usually need to isolate for 10 days. However, the rules have changed and they state that you can shorten that isolation period if you're a positive case. Um, if you take an LFT on day six, um, and remember day zero is the day that you develop symptoms or the day you test. So that's day zero, then you count six days. On day six and 24 hours later, and it has to be 24 hours later, on day seven you take an LFT and if both of those are negative and you don't have a temperature you can de-isolate. So technically you could have people, both children and adults, coming back into the setting um, on day seven after their negative LFT. I will express some caution there because it does, it's not without its risk and actually if you read the national guidance it does say to you know to make sure that they wear face coverings to limit contact with vulnerable individuals for the rest of that 10 day um, period etc which I know will be difficult in settings like yours and um, so I think it's just trying to be sensible and being mindful that um, there is still that risk um, that you know that, that people are not completely out of their infectious period but that's 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 the the, the balance that government have been trying to um um to, to um what's the yeah it's a balance isn't it because we know that lots of settings are really struggling for for staff um etc and, and so it's a balance of risks really and trying to keep things going so that's um cases in terms of close contacts um <clears throat> so that's cases that's if you're positive if you're a close contact of a positive case and the definitions of close contact are all in the flow charts that you'll have um you've got to remember to look at close contacts in the two clear days before the day they develop symptoms through to 10 days afterwards for every single case and anybody who's a close contact if you're an adult <clears throat> and you haven't had two vaccinations you'll still need to isolate for 10 clear days if you're an adult and you've had two vaccinations at least and your second dose was at least 14 days ago you don't need to isolate but you should do daily lfts and that applies if you're an adult but also for children aged five and up <clears throat> If you're under five and a close contact, national guidance suggests that you don't need to isolate um, and that you don't need to test unless you're a household contact of a positive case in which they recommend PCR testing. We expand that slightly locally and say for the children close contacts who are under five, we recommend a PCR test and any LFT testing that parents are happy to do. But it is a local recommendation and it's not something that, that, that you know, that, that can be can be enforced. But the the the, <clears throat> the reason we're um, recommending it is that um, 
um, it, it is that we think it's important to identify cases um, because it has implications for families and communities as, as well. So that's why we recommend that. So I hope that makes sense, but it's not something we can enforce. One thing I should have said about going back to the cases, just to keep you on your toes, <laughs> going back to cases, if you're a positive case, for the children who are under five who are cases, um, it, you know, the national guidance says ordinarily they would isolate for 10 days. But if parents are happy to, they can test them on the day six and day seven as well and, 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 and bring, bring them back if they haven't got a temperature um, and they're well. And I think <clears throat> this is where it becomes really tricky because the other thing is, you know, you don't want to be pressurising staff either who are still unwell to come back. I think it's about really being sensible about that. If they're not well, they, they really shouldn't shouldn't be in work. But so so that that day six and day seven um, LFT testing for cases applies to under fives as well. So those are the things that have changed. But in terms of the things that have stayed the same, all the things that you've been doing. So trying to really trying to think about how to prevent transmission in your setting because it just causes such disruption. So keeping up or everything that you're doing around hand hygiene, making sure staff are wearing face coverings when they're circulating or in communal areas. Um, if you can think about how um, <clears throat> staff are coming into contact or hopefully not coming into contact. So cohorting staff if you can to particular, we, we say cohorting, I don't know if that makes sense, but grouping staff so they're working with particular bubbles. Um, if they can take breaks alone, great, but if they can't then um, um, if if they can't, then then making sure that they are socially distanced from other staff, because I think with case rates so high, your staff are so, so valuable at the moment. You don't want to take any risk of of them of them getting COVID, because then they will be off for at least the the, the, the six days, um, <clears throat> um, or six and a bit days, I should say. Um, and um, so anything you can do really to think about how your staff are mixing or cross covering or moving from one place to another, because as much as possible, um, keeping smaller, consistent groups of staff is important. The same goes for children as well. I'm thinking about how they're kept separated, particularly when you've got cases in the setting. Um, ventilation, really important still. I know it's really chilly at the moment and hopefully we'll be coming into better weather, but you know, keeping those windows open or if you can, even for 10 10, 10, 15 minutes an hour if you can open and then close them again if it is something that is called, you know, um, meaning meaning children are uncomfortable. But actually, if you can keep windows even slightly ajar, that's definitely better than nothing um, as well. And it does really make a difference. Ventilation really does make a difference. And then vaccination as well. So hoping all of your staff are boosted. If not, please keep encouraging them. It's so important. Two vaccines is not enough. Um, we definitely need the booster to prevent people from becoming seriously unwell. Um, so really what two vaccines was for the Delta variant, three vaccines is for the Omicron variant. So you need three um, and, and and two isn't enough. And I know that there is some resistance in it still um, to, 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 to the vaccination in some quarters but it just makes sense it makes sense for the individuals and for for, <clears throat> for your setting and, and for those around the individuals as well so um and I th hopefully you should have the links um if not we can send them through to the drop-in clinics that are available and and also to um and um, that all of the sites that are available that you can book into as well. <clears throat> so I think that was all I was going to say. I haven't been keeping an eye on the chat, but I can have a little look at questions that haven't been answered, if that's helpful. Um, oh, Michelle, you might need to. You've been answering some questions here. So we've sent an email out with the information. Uh -huh. um, clarification, if a child has had COVID less than 90 days ago, but has been a close contact again last week, um yeah. yeah I answered that one yes yeah yeah. I mean, yeah I mean the national guidance does say that you 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 can LFT test within your 90 day period, um, but they, they recommend against PCR testing again. We don't think locally it's a big deal if people do are asked to PCR test again in their 90 days because you could have, you might have had Delta previously and now you've got Omicron, um, but just to be aware of that. But yeah, I would just keep going um, with that. It's, it's a bit difficult because it will change at some point. Some people 
seem to be having a positive LFT and then another positive LFT quite soon on. But but as it stands, every time you're positive, you need to isolate. Yeah, Michelle, you've answered the one about if a member of staff has had COVID, isolate uh, for 10 days and is still testing positive, does she still test tw twice weekly? Yes. Yeah. Um, Oh, sorry. No, you didn't answer that one, Michelle. So sorry. Claire, you said if a member of staff has had COVID, isolated for 10 days and is still testing positive, does she still test twice weekly? So the rules are, and this is a tricky one actually, it's a good question, Claire. Um, if you test on day 10, so, so imagine that you, you can't get your negatives and, and you're feeling fine, but you're testing positive, positive, positive. On day 10, you test positive. On day 11, you're fine. You don't have symptoms, but you're still positive. You can de-isolate at that point because it's unlikely that you're still infectious. Um, I suppose that's the the query then is, does she still test twice weekly? Um, I, think, I think the answer is yes, um, but... Um, if they if they then test positive immediately on their first test after coming back, um, after being positive, um, it's a question about whether they isolate again. I think I think the answer is yes. It is yes. <laughs> Amanda, do you want to? I was just yeah. thinking. Depends on whether they've also got any any symptoms and how well they felt. Because I'm in that position, yeah. aren't I? And that I keep testing positive, even though yeah. I feel perfectly well. Yeah, I yeah, test yeah. positive every day. Yeah. Yeah, and and I think if something happens like that, if you if you're testing positive, and I think I'd discuss those ones with us because, like you say, it's at that risk assessment around yeah. have you got new symptoms, etc. But if, for example, you know you've tested positive and then you go back to routine testing and you're testing negative and then you're positive again, yeah. then you isolate. Yeah. yeah, Claire, did you want to come in on that one? Because Claire, you got your hand up. I think you want to unmute. Oh, you there? Can you hear us, Claire? Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it wouldn't work. <laughs> so um, it's really confusing. So um, they've isolated for ten days. Yeah. They have no for a few days not had any symptoms for a fair few days. I would yeah. say about five days, mm -hmm. but is still LFT in positive. She. I think if one one nine who said yes after 10 days isolation and also i emailed um watch county council you know early years and they said yes after 10 days but with the weekly lft testing mm -hmm. if she continues to come back positive yeah then what do we do about that yeah um i, I think is she coming back positive now or is it something you're worried about she was on day nine positive, but because yeah. we've had the go ahead for day, you know, on day 11, she could return back yeah. to work. She yeah. actually didn't test on day 10. Yeah. Oh, she did. I, she I did. would probably she leave it for a week or so, maybe leave it for a week and then restart the, the testing. If she's still positive, I would then just come through to us because if they don't have any symptoms, she may be one of the ones that is a little bit... <laughs> um, unusual does that make sense yeah so leave it for two weeks then start a week just leave uh, it for one a week. week yeah then and then restart yeah okay. if, yeah yeah if, 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 if you're concerned yeah if you're concerned that they might yeah i don't think that's going to be too much of a is that all right claire and then if a child's been in contact where do we stand on whether we allow them into the setting if the parent cannot or does not want to lateral flow yeah or they can't get any tests yeah we we can't obviously it's please do try them to, to ask them to try the different um routes to get the um tests through community pharmacy or online but if they can't um I mean, we can't we can't enforce the testing of close contacts so they they need to come back into the setting um if the child then tested positive again sorry I'm, I'm losing the trail of this now if the child then tested positive again would it be possible to distinguish if she was infectious from a new case or whether she's showing positive from a previous and then wouldn't need to isolate yeah so you're talking about somebody in the 90 days test positive again we we, we can't at the moment tell whether it's an old infection or a new infection we have to assume it's a new infection and that's been the, the guidance throughout really um um, if you have tested positive within your 90 days, they might change the rules around that at some point. But at the moment, that's that's the rules. Yeah. Yeah. That's an LFT. Michelle was answering something there. 
Sorry, I'm confused, Michelle. Where you say we ask the yeah. LFT test yeah. daily yeah. for seven days? Uh, yeah, if they're, if they're a close contact. Yeah, there's um, yeah. yeah lots of questions and then... I know, yeah, then sorry. answers in between questions. I know, yeah, exactly. So if they refuse yeah. to lateral flow but close contact, so if, if they refuse to lateral flow but close contact but no symptoms, when they when should they come in? If, they used to, if they've got close contact no symptoms, they can come in. Um, you know, ideally it would be nice for them to, to PCR test and um, lateral flow, but they can come in. Um, if someone has a positive LFT test on day six and seven, should they keep doing daily LFTs or save them and test on day 11? Uh, especially as we aren't getting deliveries. Oh, interesting question, Sue. There have been hassles with positive cases who've been isolating. Um, so, uh, I, I think that's, that's a, it's, it's a tricky one, that, because technically, if they've got a positive LFT on day six and seven, then technically they can try again on day eight and day nine. Um, I think if you aren't getting deliveries and, and you want to make that a policy for your setting or, you know, just to suggest um, that, that that might be sensible to conserve LFTs, then I don't see that that's a problem. It just means you might not get them back earlier, if that makes sense. So hope that makes sense. Yeah, I've been households with positive cases who've been isolating with one child of school age testing negative and schools are going to collect that child to enable them to go to school. <sighs> yeah, so I mean, locally we are supporting settings, whether that be school or early years. If there is a household contact of a positive case, this is only local guidance, though. This is not national guidance. Um, if parents are happy to, to keep them home until they, they PCR test um, and then come into the setting. So I think that's that's what you're saying, though, is that there have been positive cases and the children are still going into school. Well, they can, because according to national guidance, they can go into school. Um, it's just, you know, we do have a more cautious um, local recommendation on that. Can a person with symptoms just LFT rather than PCR? Not really, no. <laughs> no, you should, if you've got symptoms, you should PCR and that's for a number of reasons. Firstly, PCRs are, are more sensitive than LFTs, so you definitely want to know if you've got COVID if you've got symptoms, because um, LFTs are not quite as sensitive as, as, as PCRs. And also, if you have got it, it helps in what we call surveillance, because um, um, a proportion of those PCR tests are sent for um, genotyping so that if there are new variants that emerge, we pick them up. We, we, we don't know what's happening if people are just doing LFTs. There's, there's a couple of reasons why it's important people with symptoms um, have a PCR. If a child's a close contact with a positive case but is under five, do we recommend a lateral flow or a PCR? So <laughs> we're recommending both. <laughs> now locally, so Nationally, they say you don't need to test unless you're a household contact of a positive case, in which case um, under five should have a PCR test. We just say do a PCR test if you're a close contact and any lateral flow testing that, that, that parents um, might be happy to do. But that's only if, if parents are happy. If the case test, right. If the person has a symptom, are they still isolating until they've received their PCR, yes, please. Yes, if you've got symptoms, you must isolate immediately and book a PCR test and isolate until your results. Yes. Um, LFT and PCR tests, like symptomatic people, PCR, yeah, Jane was saying that. Under fives. Um, LFTs are available online. So he's going to be right, Sue. So. Oh, have we come to the end of the questions? If a person has a symptom, are they still isolating until they've received their PCR results? Yes. Oh, I thought I'd done that one. OK, it's a different one. Yes, they must do. Staff members testing positive on day 10, day, day 10 LFT and has isolated for the full period. Are they allowed to return to work? Yes, on day 11, as long as they've had two previous. Um, no, sorry. Yes, on day 11, as long as they don't have a temperature and they're well enough to work. Um, Sue, have you got the year link? Right. Can I ch also check, as Public Health stated, if positive LFT do not need to PCR to confirm unless symptoms, which seems a bit contradictory. Um, which bit's contradictory? So <clears throat> if you've got symptoms, you go straight for a PCR test. Um, if you haven't got symptoms, you, you might be doing LFT testing regularly. And then if you if you test positive, you don't need to confirm. I know this has caused quite a lot of confusion, though, on this. So if you've got positive LFT, you don't need a PCR to confirm unless you've got symptoms. But if you've got symptoms, it's good to go for a PCR test. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Symptoms, PCR, LFT, no symptoms. And if you're LFT, 
is positive, you don't need to then confirm it by PCR. Yeah. Um, pregnancy and vaccinated staff or only one vaccination, how long do they need to isolate for? So you've done that one, have you? Yeah. So, so yeah, cases. Well, no, it just depends if it's a, if it's a case or a close contact. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Which so one is. Yeah, if it's a case, then they, they can do the day six, day seven, uh, you know, they, they do the day six, day seven LFT. If it's a close contact, then they need to, they need to isolate for 10 clear days. Um, oh, LFTs are not advised to symptomatic people. If people get symptoms, they PCR test. That's right. Yeah. Yes. If, so if you get an LFT result that's positive, you do not need to PCR. That's right. Or does that only apply to people who are routine LFT testing? Yeah. Yes. So it's really for people that are routinely LFT testing. Um, um, that they, and if they get a positive, they don't need to then. Basically, if, you, if you're doing LFT testing, so you, have, you haven't got any symptoms, but you're doing, you know, LFT yeah. testing and it's positive, you don't need to get a PCR. But if you've got symptoms, you should go for a PCR. Yeah. It is a bit confusing because I know sometimes do uh, staff after LFT during their 90 days. Yes, please, you can LFT during your 90 days. Um, Sorry, Nadia, can I just interject yeah. there? Because I think where it's getting confusing is, so if you yeah. test yeah. on an LFT and yeah. then you get the symptoms, okay, you don't then need to go for a PCR, do you? But if you've got symptoms, you would go for a PCR. It is a bit confusing. So, so if you if you test positive on an LFT and then you get symptoms, you yeah, wouldn't you go, for go for a PCR. I think that's correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, but if, if you've got, got symptoms, symptoms, just go for a PCR. PCR. Yeah. And if you happen to do an LFT when you've got symptoms, well, and it's positive, then it's a bit debatable about whether you need to go for a PCR. But you know, I, I don't think you do need to. Thank you, Nadia. Yeah. But what I wouldn't do is LFT when you've got symptoms, because that's not necessarily going to tell you if you've got COVID. <laughs> so that's why it's good to go for the PCR. Yeah. Does 10 day isolation for close contacts count for everyone who hasn't had a booster? 10 day isolation for close contacts is for everyone who has a, who is not doubly vaccinated. So anyone with one or zero vaccinations who's an adult and a close contact. Hope that makes sense. Right. Sorry. I've. <laughs> I may need to jump onto the schools call now. I do okay. apologise. I've taken a lot of time. <laughs> you may. I'm just watching the clock. So. Yeah. Okay. Is, there, is there another question, another hand up? Hi, yeah, we've got a hand up from Natalie. If you wanted oh, yeah. to um, take you off yeah. mic, Natalie. Yeah, hi there. Um, just really as a, a parent and being a manager of preschool, I think it is getting really confusing with having local advice and government advice. Um, I think we're really trying to keep relationships um, calm and good. But when you've got the government saying they don't want you going for PCRs and then we've got guidance from the local authority saying they do, we do still want you to go for PCRs if you are close contact or living with somebody who's got it. It's very difficult getting them, but also people that aren't attending schools aren't getting that same information. I can't find that anywhere apart from... If I have a meeting with you or my son's secondary school, for instance, that would not let him back without a PCR, so he's lost time off school again. Um, yeah, we haven't said so that. It's getting very schools. difficult yeah. um, with the difference between guidance. And I'm thinking people are looking at the government as soon as they get symptoms or whatever. We look straight to our government website and then the parents are going, but we don't need to PCR or family don't need to they PCR don't as long as we're LFT. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, don't so. Yeah, it was just a, a, and yeah. if you wanted for your setting not to and say actually close contacts who are under five don't need to test unless they're a household contact in which national guidance does say they should PCR test, then that's yeah. fine. You know, then yeah. that's fine, Natalie. I think um, and, and I, I take on board what you're saying. I take on board what you're saying. I think the reason we haven't asked for PCR for all close contacts for schools is because they can do daily LFT testing. And for early years, daily LFT testing is, is sticking at something in the nostril for seven days rather than a single test which is why we went with the PCR if that makes sense yeah. but I must you know. admit, secondary schools in the Neaton are asking for the PCRs 
and uh, asking children be. not We've to come changed back to school. That. Yeah, I'm just about Which to go and talk to the head with. teachers now, so I will, yeah. I, I will, I'll raise that because we have removed yeah. that, and I did did mention that last week. Oops. I have to say yeah. though, not all heads might have been on the meeting, although we've sent all the guidance out. Yeah. So I'll make sure I, I raise that. Yeah. Also, what are we doing yeah. about LFTs? Because even though we're ordering them, there's such a delay, and if we're now expected to test continuously for seven days. We are running out rapidly. Our staff can't even get them from the pharmacists because they've run out. And waiting for the ones off the government side, they're taking weeks. I ordered them way before Christmas and they actually didn't come till this week. So it's really difficult then to get people to be able to LFT as much as is requested. I understand. I might leave you in the safe hands of Jane okay. and, and colleagues here, if that's <laughs> right. You. You're much yeah. better on testing than I am. But Thank I'll take you. that on board about the national guidance and yeah, Thank I, and, you. You know, and, and local guidance and let us know, colleagues. I think, Melissa, you were agreeing as well. So if, if it's causing further problems, but feel free to follow the national guidance if it makes it simpler for you. Um, Thank you. OK. All right. I'll see you soon. Nice to see you all. OK, bye. Hi there. So in terms of the um, testing situation, you are quite right. We know there have been um, supply problems since the government announcement um, on changing, um, you know, all, all of the uh, self-isolation rules before Christmas. Um, so we know there have been supply issues and that's across every channel, including our own in, in local authorities. Um, so, you know, I know you have your own supply channel. I expect it's having problems. Um, a number of people have been coming to me and saying, I can't get anything online, um, but, you, but you can. Um, I, re I appreciate there is a delay sometimes in those kits coming through, but, but the kits are available. Um, you just may have to go back later that day or, or the next day. Um, th there is a variable delivery turnaround. I've had kits take three days and I've had them come the next day. And that's been between Christmas and New Year up, up to now. So I do acknowledge that it is a little bit potluck um, at the minute. Pharmacies are getting deliveries six days a week, but we think their kits are running out very quickly. Some of them are reporting running out in, in an hour or so with no subsequent delivery until the next day. So, so do recognise um, the issues there. What I would say is until this Sunday, I have some limited flexibility um, to supply locally um, LFT kits to key worker settings. Um, but I can only do so um, in in situations where nobody, uh, where you can't get kits through through your own channel um, or or through other channels. And obviously, I only have limited kits myself. I've had to stand down all of our uh, local distribution arrangements to support the key worker um, scenario. So, if perhaps you could um, put um, either a message in the chat column here or contact the early years team if you have an emergency emergency supply issue I will speak to my distribution team and see if we can get some kits out to you the delivery turnaround at this point is about two days because we're serving so many settings at the moment but I, I'd like to help you I can help you up until Sunday this week um, but I'm really asking for those who, who have got crisis um, need rather than to restock so that you've got some in hand if you like um, is that OK, Amanda? That's probably about as much as I can say on that. Hi, Jane. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Um, I think, you know, if you can't get a kit and you haven't got LFT tests, we've got to start being pragmatic about these things. You can't LFT. Um, you, know, you can't magic something out of thin air that you don't have. Um, we've got national guidance we've got local wide guidance which we choose to implement to give us an extra layer of protection where we can but when we don't have lft tests then we fall back to the national position so um unless there are any further hands up or any further questions that have come in then um, i'll bring this session to a close thank you everybody for your time Thank you, Michelle. Uh, I didn't mention you earlier on, but you've been busily answering the questions there. Um, thank you, everybody, and we'll uh, see you again in two weeks. And um, we're at the end of the Early Years Advisors email in between and the other PHE inboxes that you've been using. 
and the early years briefing will be out tomorrow. So thank you and we'll see you again soon.